Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys, wherever you are in this beautiful world. Whenever you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin family channel. For the newcomers, my name is Didi. I'm walking and talking on the beautiful beach here in Phuket, Thailand. Today we have high waves. Hopefully the sound is still okay. And yes, of course, in today's video, five amazing Bitcoin charts. Yes, I did my ultimate best to select some beautiful charts for you guys. Of course, a very helpful trading tip, amazing travel tip, of course, some live advice and talking about the news, Senator Warren, what my opinion is about her. And probably you will have some comments about that as well. Now, let's quickly jump into the first part, into the charts to show you what is happening to Bitcoin. Are we really gonna crash down below 40K? Or is this just a small dip before we go to 48 gate? Let's see what the charts have to say. Bam. Yes, guys, in Bitcoin, we trust. Beautiful coffee mug, guys. Uh, the first chart for today is, of course, the four hour chart. On the four hour chart, we can see that we are doing exactly what I just said. Yeah, we are going sideways on this level. And um, we can see the wicks becoming smaller. So yeah, the market bullishness is returning a little bit. So we are keeping support on this beautiful area over there. Let's try to break that small part of resistance and, and go up to the 44K again. That's what I um, want to see into the charts. I don't know if Bitcoin is gonna do it, but we can see a decrease in the yellow on the bottom over here. We can see the white line flattening out, the blue line already crossing that white line. We see a buy signals. We still, still need like a candle close above the yellow stepping line to have a confirmation on the four hours, then we would have, a, for example, a triple confirmation. But let's see, it's a very beautiful chart to see that we are not falling down now at the moment below 40K, but we will zoom out a little bit to see what is happening more. On the weekly, of course, we can see that that golden cross is gonna happen. To be very clear, this is the first golden cross ever in history of Bitcoin on the weekly chart. We never have seen a golden cross. I can zoom out to show you that that never happened before here. We touched that red line. We never went down below the red line. So that 50 never went down below the 200. This is now the first time in history that we went down below it with a bearish cross, a death cross over there, the 50 crossing the 200 to the downside. And also the first time it will go cross bullish, a golden cross. Very beautiful to see on the weekly chart how that is playing out. Now, we also see that white line there. You know, if you watch my videos that I already drew that weeks ago, that white line, I told you already weeks ago, this is gonna be a huge part of resistance. And look what exactly happened. It is the resistance. We hit that one and we are coming down at the moment. This is completely normal. And we have a run of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight greenish candles, eight weeks bullishness, there will be a bearish week. How far will that bearish week fall back? At the moment, we are finding that support beautiful over here, but yes, we could fall back even to the 35K level, for example, and I would still not be freaking out. That would still be a beautiful pullback after an eight week bullish run. Don't freak out, but zoom out. And if you zoom out, we zoom out to the monthly, to my favorite chart. I've been creating this chart like years ago already, uh, I think two or three years ago now, sharing it since then. And I will share it here once again with my face very small here in the corner because that's not important at the moment. The important part of this chart that every time again and again, it plays out exactly the same, guys. We did see that orange line crossing the blue line over here on the left in March 2016, bull market. You saw it here again, November 2019, bull market. Now we see it here again, and November 2023, this is gonna be a bull market. How long is it gonna take? From the halving till the next stop, takes normally about 17 months. From the halving to the next stop, took 17 months. From the halving to the next stop, took 17 months. Only the first time, it took only 12 months. From the bottom to the next stop, here will take about uh, 1,000 days, 33 bars. And there will be in August 2025, September 2025. If you calculate from the bottom to the halving, that there's exactly 17 bars, just like it was before and just like it was before that. If we want to know when there is a new all-time high, the first time from the bottom to a new all-time high took 27 bars, 820 days. The second time took 24 bars, 730 days. If now the third time would take 24 bars, 
again 730 days then a new all-time high would happen in November 2024 so there's a long way to go before we get into these massive runs in bitcoins to this huge new highs of above 100k you still have the time to accumulate bitcoin now now let's quickly jump into some more interesting charts guys this is the first interesting chart very interesting chart i might say this one is the risk uh, versus return 2020 to 2023 so on the top you can see this is weekly data source is bloomberg uh, bubble size is correlation to 60 to 40. now we can see all of these things over here equity we can see the spx we can see china we can see the country as its global hedge we can see gold over there we can see all of them yes not too risky but also not too much result now you might ask where is bitcoin bitcoin is completely over there around the moon yes it could be a little bit more risky but the return is also way more than all of these over here guys so the path that all these are walking is not the path that bitcoin is walking bitcoin is the best performing asset of this last decade and it will stay the best performing asset of the next decade when these spot ETFs and all that stuff will be introduced guys because all that liquidity that is now over here could also flow into there which will propel it into beautiful more heights even and yes it will become less risky of course I don't even know why they call it risky maybe because of volatility the volatility will probably decrease but I will talk about that a little bit later now the next chart this chart this chart is showing you again a beautiful fractal I should make my fractal face smaller we can compare 2019-21 with 2022-2024 and then we can see that we had here that bottom structure we went up sideways we went up and we had that small fractal over there where we went up and pulled back with 20 to 30 percent you see and that is when we went higher and higher and higher now look what we had bottom structure bottom structure we went up we went sideways now we had a huge push above 40k we are again pulling back are we going to copy this same move again above 100,000 US dollar per bitcoin and don't be fooled it can take all the way up to 2025 guys cool chart pause it if you want to see it a little bit more now for the guys that like ethereum of course this time i will share you some ethereum chart as well because i think this is a very simplified chart i found it uh, somewhere on twitter and i think it's very cool to see that now on ethereum we have here a bullish cross on the macd and the first green bar appearing so bitcoin has already been doing this now for three months but now ethereum starts to follow as well so starting to get bullish on the macd the previous time that ethereum got bullish on the macd was over here guys in 2020 that was just before that huge bull run of course from 220 dollar on ethereum to 4800 dollar on ethereum then we had a bearish cross that was the bear market now again a bullish cross not from 200 dollar but now from 2000 dollar where is this going to end probably around somewhere 8000 maybe 9000 maybe even 10000 dollar for an ethereum price per ethereum let's see but we can see that the bullishness is now starting as well yes in ethereum guys this is the last chart for today this chart is showing you again the cycles and how they beautifully play out every time again and again we can see on this chart that over here <clears throat> we have a bear market it always takes 12 months then we have a very boring phase I guess you call it boring I can I call it a shitload of profit because I already doubled in this boring phrase um, then we get the bull market it will take 12 months then again a bear market of a year now we are now here in this boring phase hmm. you might call it a boring phase again I got in here again around that uh, bottom between 16 and 20k so I doubled my capital already at this boring phase and I can double it again in this boring phase all the way here to that new all-time high somewhere what I said in November 2024 because that would be above 60k which would mean 20k it's times three already around that level and from that moment again we get a 12 month beautiful explosive bull market all the way up into I believe September 2025 so there's a very cool chart 
to show you that we always do and take the same steps in Bitcoin. We are now here. We will end up somewhere here in the beginning of 2025. So why not accumulate a shitload of Bitcoin around this area? Because you can still double it if you go above 60K again. I hope you really enjoyed these charts, guys. Yes, of course, always zooming out, looking at the bigger picture. I will keep repeating it till you dream it, like, till you wake up with a nightmare. Oh, Diddy is saying, always zoom out. <laughs> Something like that, guys. Yes, it's very important. We are just nearing the halving, April 2024. From that halving, always a massive bull market. I believe exactly the same is going to happen. So you should be buying Bitcoin every day. Dollar cost averaging has been proven to be the most simple and also effective way of accumulating Bitcoin during these moments in the cycle. So buy a little bit of Bitcoin every week or every month from your salary uh, and slowly upwards to the halving in April 2024 and maybe then stop it for a couple of months, about 18 months before the top will be there. Because yes, I believe, look the waves in the water, I believe that the top will be approximately be around 17 to 18 months after the halving, arriving somewhere September 2025. But let's see, let's quickly jump now into the trading tip. The sun starts to rise, so I go walk up a little bit here on the beach. There's a little bit shadow, so the image is a little bit better, guys. So last week, guys, we talked a lot about candlestick patterns. This week, we're going to talk a little bit about chart patterns. Today, we are talking about the head and shoulders pattern and the inverse head and shoulders pattern. What are these patterns and what do they mean? If you look now at this image over here, there, you can see exactly what the head and shoulder pattern means. So we have a rising price pulling back, making the first shoulder, reaching the neckline, going up a little bit higher, coming again back to the neckline, again up and again back to the neckline. That is a head and two shoulders. If we see this one in an upward market, then that is mostly an indication of a reversal of the market. So the target should be from the neckline downwards. An inverse head and shoulder pattern is exactly the opposite. Coming down with a bearish move, we come up to the neckline, we go a little bit more down, again up to the neckline, down, up to the neckline, and then bam, we should break the neckline to the upside, and that is a reversal of a bearish move into a bullish move. So the head and shoulder pattern and the inverse head and shoulder pattern, two beautiful patterns to give you an indication if you will see a reversal in the market. That was the trading tip for today. Enjoy it. Go to the charts and search for a few of these head and shoulder or inverse head and shoulder patterns and let me know down below the video if they indeed were an indication of a reversal of the market. Now let's jump into the travel tip. For the travel tip guys, I'm going to turn around the screen. Can you see these beautiful boats over there and the catamaran over there? That is something I want to talk about with my travel tip. Yes. Because when you're traveling, sometimes you want to rent such a boat. You don't need to own these boats, but you want to rent the boat. I'm turning around because the sun is becoming very bright for the camera, guys. And to rent these boats, I always use the same website. Get your boat. It's a very simple app. I use it on my iPhone. Oh, check. I found a new iPhone, beautiful puppet. How do you call it? I now have a Bitcoin puppet, by the way. That you can like hold it with this. But the app is called Get My Boat. And get my boat, you can fill in where you are at that location and you will find all kinds of boats that you can rent. Not only these big catamarans, but also these small fisher boats or any other boat. Because the local people there will be offering their service to rent their boat to you. And mostly that's including a captain and everything else. So I have a friend visiting this week, Ron, a very good childhood friend. Uh, and we are going to do a boat trip this week. And we rented the boat through that app again. It's very beautiful. Uh, you can pay it with your debit card. So you can use your uh, Bybit debit card or crypto.com debit card. I have been asking them now a couple of times again. Hey, why don't you accept Bitcoins? They are thinking about it, but they still need to integrate it all on the back end and all that stuff. So it's a lot of work. Every time again, they say the same to me. Um, so yeah, I don't see them doing it very soon, but as long as they don't do it, we will just use our Bitcoin cards. And why do I rent these boats, guys? Because often when you go with 10 people, it's cheaper to rent the boat than to pay these um, day tours. Because these day tours, they will ask you like two or 3,000 baht, for example, for a complete day. 
But if you do that with 10 people, that's 30,000 baht, for example. For 30,000 baht, you can rent a private boat with a private captain and a lunch, etc. included. So you're saving bitcoins, plus you have a private boat, and you can sail beautifully here on the sea in Phuket to visit some beautiful islands. I will make a beautiful video, of course, tomorrow about that beautiful boat trip, guys. The boat trip is going to go to, I think, Coral Island or something. Yeah, it was called Coral Island. It's a very beautiful catamaran. Yes, of course, today, again, a little bit booty on the beach. Ha, finally. <laughs> I need to keep up my record here on the beautiful uh, images. Uh, but yes, I will make a video and show you that video, of course, later this week. And the second advantage of Get My Boat is that it's very safe because you get your confirmation directly, everything is online, everything is booked. It's a very handy tool, guys, to rent some boats all over the world. Now, that was the travel tip for today. Let's jump into the next part. The next part, guys, is the news. And the news is about Elizabeth, Elizabeth Warren, the most hated person, I think, on the earth at the moment. But she is now again uh, proposing this anti digital, anti money laundering bill, guys. Now, to be very clear, I'm very happy she's proposing this. Why? Because only 11 of the 330 bills that she ever proposed passed. That's a very beautiful result for Elizabeth Warren. 11 bills of the 330 that she proposed passed. This must be the most unsuccessful senator ever in the history of Bitcoin, guys. So yeah, uh, Elizabeth Warren, probably the most hated, but also most unsuccessful senator ever. Like, so just imagine she's gonna go for her next job and then his next uh, employer is gonna ask her, so what was your result? Uh, how, how did you do as a senator? And then she needs to answer, yeah, yeah, I proposed 330 bills, but only 11, <laughs> 11, 11. <laughs> do you know that video, like from YouTube, 11? <laughs> but only 11 passed. That, like, that's not success. That's like terrible. That's like not even a good result, guys. So I'm not afraid that if she proposes a bill, a digital anti-money laundering bill, that one will be accepted because none of their bills was accepted. She is just not, she's just the most unsuccessful uh, senator ever. So I would say, uh, fuck Elizabeth Warren because probably that bill, again, is not gonna be accepted because yes, she has a track record of not performing at all. So let's hope this won't be the 12th bill that will be accepted in her career. <laughs> because then maybe she would get another job in the future. Oh my God, man. 11 out of the 330. 11 out of the 330. 11 is my lucky number. Let her get stuck on 11. Now let's jump into the next part, guys. Answering some questions of some followers. The first question that I'm gonna answer was in Dutch, guys, and the question was, did he normally, he told us that you only exit with 30 to 50% at the bull market top, and this time you said 70%. Why is that? Do you believe that BlackRock is gonna crash the market harder, or what is your reason for this? My reason for this exit strategy, guys, is that I believe this is one of the last massive bull runs. I believe this bull run is gonna give returns investments that are massive, like a super cycle massive bull market. So on that top, I want to be able to take the most as possible profits into USDT, USDC, or any other stablecoin at that moment, maybe even USDT on liquid network of Bitcoin. Because yes, also on the Bitcoin blockchain second layer liquid, you can now have stablecoins. So I'm going to exit a little bit more than normally, for example, 70% of our capital into these stablecoins, because I believe that there will be a crash again, maybe only 60%, but I don't believe there will be a huge super cycle bull run after this one again. I believe they will become smaller and smaller and smaller because when the institutional investors start to access the market, like BlackRock, like all these institutions because of the spot ETF, they will slowly start to take control on Bitcoin and make it a little bit less volatile because they don't like too much volatility. We saw exactly the same with gold. When the spot ETF was approved in gold, we saw this huge run but after that, gold became this stable factor, guys. It became not that volatile anymore. Of course, it's still a lot of value, but it's going up and down a little bit. The swings became smaller in gold. And I think that is exactly the same that they have intentions to do with Bitcoin. Because the spot ETF, it will be approved and they will start to regulate a little bit more the price volatility. 
And that is why I believe this bull market is one of the last huge cycles that you can make a shitload of profits in because of that volatility. And that's why I'm exiting a little bit more than normal. 70% probably, something like that. And 30%, of course, I will always keep in Bitcoin. But be very clear, at the next bear market bottom, I will go back all in again. I will treat Bitcoin as my core capital. So when we have that beautiful dip again, I will go all in back into Bitcoin. Bitcoin is my core capital. Bitcoin is the currency that I see as my core currency. A lot of people see dollars or euros as their core currency. I see Bitcoin as my core currency. And I want to multiply the amount of Bitcoins, not the dollar value, the amount of Bitcoins. And that is how I play the game every time again and again and again. Exit into a stable coin, your core currency, because it's very stable, but gives you a lot of inflation. Then when Bitcoin crashes, I will buy back my currency, Bitcoin again, because that's deflationary and making my life cheaper every year again and again and again. Now, second question was from a guy asking me, Didi, if you don't have a bank account, how do you, for example, pay for the onward tickets that I just booked last week? You know these cheap onward tickets I was talking about? And he was like, how are you paying them if you don't have a bank account? So all these tickets, I am paying them all with my debit cards. I buy with debit card, my crypto.com debit card, my Wirex debit card, my tab debit card. All of these debit cards you can use online to pay for all these services. And you don't need a bank account anymore. You need a Bybit account. That Bybit account needs to be full with Bitcoins, USDT, Ethereum, whatever currencies you have. And you have that card and you can pay everything with that card. You don't need banks anymore. We are living in a complete decentralized digital future. Why would we still need these very traditional, centralized financial tools like a bank? That's not necessary anymore. We have very beautiful technologies that are way better than those banks and that work perfectly fine. We have been proving it as a family now for the last six years, serving the world, 42 countries unbanked. Again, unbanked. A white, three daughters and a little gay dog. Unbanked all over the world, 42 countries, yes, just sometimes using the debit cards, but mostly peer-to-peer -peer Bitcoin transactions, guys. So that was my answer to those two questions. Let's jump into the next part. Turning around for the last part of the video, the inspirational part, the inspirational quote for today, guys, is, yes, it is very hard to fail, but it is even worse to never have tried to succeed at all. Yes, almost attacked by a white horse. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not a chart pattern, that's a white horse on the beach, guys. So yes, it's very hard to fill, but it would be terrible, even worse, to never have tried to succeed. Why is there always so much fear for failure? I think the path to failure or success are almost the same. Because you will only know at the end if it was a failure or a success. But the whole path towards that point is exactly the same. And at the end, yes, a slight little difference could be there. Ah, it was a failure. It could also be a success. So I think it's a way worse feeling in the far future to have this feeling like, shit, I've never tried to reach that success. I was too afraid to fail. And every time when people say that to me, yeah, but there's so many risks that you're taking and it's so difficult what you're doing and the rate of failure is so high, I will be the same, I will give the same answer over and over again. If you will be 80 on your bed, thinking back about your life, would you then rather love to think about all those moments you tried and you had a beautiful path to failure or to success? Or would you then rather think, ah, I should have, I could have, I would have. I should have changed my life. I would love to have tried it. Now I'm too old, now I can't do it anymore. Again, the path to failure and success are exactly the same. It's only the last little bit that makes it a difference. But when it ends up in a failure, you again continue the path to your next success. It's like the Bitcoin price. Life is the same. We will go up and we will go down and we will have successes and we will have failures. But both of them will make you stronger. A failure will educate you exactly what you did wrong and will make you do the right thing the next time. And a success will show you that you focus on the right strength. 
and you could focus a little bit more on those strengths and make more successes out of it. It's not bad to fail. It's never bad to fail. The worst thing you can do is not trying at all. Why would you not try it? The failure only hurts you because you think that other people think that you failed. If you don't feel like a failure, if you don't feel that the thing you did was a failure, it won't hurt. But as long as you keep thinking about all the opinions of other people and what they think and see as a failure, then it could hurt. But for me, it's very simple. I can be walking the beach all day till the end, hoping to see a beautiful waterfall, arriving at that end, ah shit, there is no waterfall, it was a failure. But the whole path, what a beautiful success. I had a beautiful beach walk, it was an amazing day. That's how I think you should see failure and success, guys. Now, that was the end of the video. I hope you really enjoyed today's video. Thank you for watching. If you did enjoy the video, then please give the video a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and let me know down below in the comments, what do you think about the charts, uh, all the tips, of course, everything else that we talked about. And yes, there were no booties now at the end, but I showed you a couple of booties in the middle. Bitcoin, beach, and booty, the most beautiful things here in the world on Thailand. Phuket, oh no, Phuket. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. I wish you an amazing day, and see you tomorrow again. Bam.